In this demonstration, we're going to see how we can rapidly design and validate a controller for a rotary inverted pendulum. Our system consists of an inverted pendulum that can be balanced by positioning a motor arm beneath it. We need to design, test, and implement a controller for this system. We're going to use simulation to do it. First, we're going to import a model from a CAD system into Simmechanics. This gives us a dynamic model that we can use to perform the control design. We will design the controller, test it in simulation, and then connect it to the real-time hardware to verify its performance on the true system. Here are the steps that we will go through to do this. First, we will import the CAD model into Simmechanics, including the parts and all of the constraints. We will linearize this model to design the full state feedback controller. We will then test this control system on the full nonlinear plant model to verify its behavior. Next, we will configure the model to communicate with hardware and generate code using Quark, and then deploy the code onto Quanza real-time hardware. I'll now switch over to the models to show how this can be done. Here is the CAD model of our rotary inverted pendulum. It contains the parts and the mates that define the connections between those parts. We're going to export this assembly to a Simmechanics XML file. This XML file has the important information from the assembly, such as the parts, their masses, and locations of center of inertia, and how they're connected. When we import this XML file into MATLAB, a Simmechanics block diagram is automatically built. This block diagram is associated with the geometry files exported from the CAD system. Here you can see the block diagram that contains the parts and the constraints, and when we run the simulation, a three-dimensional animation is automatically generated showing how the system moves under gravity. You can see that the parts and the constraints have been correctly translated as it oscillates as we would expect. We're now going to close this model so that we can perform the rest of the steps on a more complete system that includes the controller. Now we'll open up the complete model of our rotary inverted pendulum and execute the steps to design the control system. Here you can see the complete model. In this subsystem, we see the CAD model that we imported into Simmechanics. It has been restructured and connected to an electromechanical model of a motor. Here you can see the electrical connections, the mechanical connections, and some nonlinear effects such as friction. If we go up to the top level, we can see the controller. The controller has a set of gains that act on the state vector, so a simple PD controller. When we run this simulation, you can see that because we don't have an active controller, the pendulum simply swings from the vertical position down towards the floor due to gravity. We'll now use these MATLAB commands to design the control system. The first thing that we need to do is to configure the model so that it is ready for linearization. These MATLAB commands configure the input and the output for where we will linearize the system. Next, we'll use the MATLAB command linearize to generate a linearized model of this system. Now we can look at the specification for how our controller should behave. We have a specification for the maximum overshoot and the 2% settling time. We can use these values to calculate the damping ratio and the natural frequency of our system. Using standard equations for control design, we can define the pole locations. And then once we have those locations, we can use the MATLAB command place to generate a vector of gains that will achieve the performance from our specification. We execute these MATLAB commands and go back to the command window where we can see a set of gains have been generated based on the spec that we have. Now we will return the model to its original state and run the simulation. When we run the simulation this time you can see that the pendulum is remaining near vertical or zero degrees as the motor oscillates between minus 20 degrees and 20 degrees according to the command signal. If we go to the Mechanics Explorer, we can see in the animation how the pendulum is behaving. We can see that the pendulum is remaining vertical as the motor arm oscillates between two positions, minus 20 degrees and plus 20 degrees. Now we will see how we can test this system on the actual hardware. To test the controller on actual hardware, we're going to use Quanzer's Quark software. This software establishes a real-time control loop with Quanzer's rotary inverted pendulum module from within Simulink. Quark takes care of all of the low-level configurations to allow for very quick real-time deployment of the controller. First, we replace the SIM mechanics model of the rotary pendulum with a subsystem that can communicate with the rotary inverted pendulum hardware. This is the setup you see in the lower left-hand corner of your screen. Inside the hardware subsystem, 
you can see the three principal quark blocks that you need to set up the real-time control. Hill Initialize, Hill Read, and Hill Write. The Hill Initialize block allows the user to select and configure multiple data acquisition devices from Quanzer or other manufacturers. In this demo, we'll be using the Quanzer Q8 data acquisition device. The Hill Read encoder block reads the output of the motor and pendulum encoders. We use a bias block to set the initial pendulum angle to minus 180 degrees. The Hill Write analog block applies a voltage signal to the D to A channel on the chosen data acquisition device in Hill Initialize. The gain of minus 1 maps positive controller output to counterclockwise motor rotation. Now we need to configure the model for real-time operation. Since we will be simulating in real-time, a fixed step solver must be used. We will use ODE1. Selecting Quark Build generates the real-time code, and selecting Quark Start runs the generated code on the target hardware. At this point, we'll manually rotate the pendulum to an upright position. The balance controller becomes active once the pendulum is close to vertical. Now we'll have the commanded angle oscillate back and forth between plus and minus 20 degrees. The pink line on the scope shows the commanded angle oscillate between plus and minus 20 degrees. At each change, the motor angle in yellow follows that command while keeping the pendulum angle shown in blue on the scope close to zero degrees or in the vertical position. Comparing the simulation results of the nonlinear model with the behavior of the real hardware shows they are similar. The larger oscillations in the hardware are likely due to physical effects such as friction that are slightly higher than we estimated in the simulation. Additional tuning of the plant model would result in even better agreement. In this demonstration, we have shown how we can use simulation to design a controller and then easily validate that design directly on hardware all within a single environment.